Hi, I'm Jesper Peterson from KDAP. In this episode, we're going to see the solution to a simple exercise. As I said earlier on, this training videos that you're watching here, or these videos that you're watching here, is actually our regular training material. In our regular trainings, we obviously do a lot of exercise. We're not going to do that in this video series, but I chose to just show you this one here so you get an idea of QML in action. So what does it look like when QML comes out of my fingers? How difficult is it to think up the QML application? In this exercise, we first need to create this user interface that you see on the screen. And following that, there's a few questions that will give us some additional insight into some of the, the, the issues in QML. Replicate the user interface here. It's a 400 by 400 rectangle, and yeah, that is grayish. So I'll go over here to my QML. I cheated a bit, and I already set up the project so that I can start here. So we'll say it's a rectangle. It already gave me the, the rectangle suggestions when I had typed rect, and I could just press Enter. And we got the grouping here already. The width was 400. And the height is 400. And let's run that. Hmm. It says uh, expected token colon. That's not very nice of it to say, but at least I can see it's on uh, it's on line two. And of course, I didn't do this mistake for real. I know better, but it's a very common mistake. And remember, we're talking about property bindings not assignments. Assignment, you can leave that in your C++ level, but in QML, we have bindings. So of course, my width is 400. The width is a property binding to the value 400, as is the height. And wait a minute, there's still some red underline here. What's that about? Well, of course, well, we can try and run and see what it says. It says rectangle is not a type. Hmm. Basically, it tells me there is no such element that I know of that is called rectangle. And of course, it doesn't know because I need my import statement. Import, Qt Quick. And I can choose from many different versions of Qt Quick here. The newer version, the more features. So I could choose Qt Quick 2.9. That's the most recent Qt Quick version on the Qt installed on my computer. Okay. And now we will see the rectangle here coming up. We see a rectangle, it's definitely not gray. Why is that? Well, color colon gray. And here is the 400 by 400 gray rectangle. Excellent. We have a bluish rectangle sitting 50 down and 50 in and 50 from each of the side here and it's half the height, so let's see if we can get that. The blue rectangle is going to be a child of our other rectangle, so rectangle again here. Let's not forget the color this time, so light blue. Its X position was 50, its Y position is 50. Its width, we had 450 from each side, that's going to give me 300. And I need the colon again. The height is, let me see, 150. Is that about right? Yeah, that looks right. Excellent. 150, not 140. Then we have the green rectangle sitting below it. Mm -hmm. Cut, paste. It is green. It's Width and height is the same, it's X position is the same. The Y position has changed, so we have a, have a height of 150, so that's 200 down, 200. And magic again, looks perfectly right. Now, let's see, we've got the white blob sitting 50 in, 50 down, width and height 50, it seems. And that's a child up here. Rectangle, x colon 50, 
Y colon 50. Why do I have them on the same line? Well, I did not on the other ones. Well, it doesn't matter. I can have them on the same line. I can have them on separate lines. It's just um, what feels right. And of course, color colon white. And again, I press run to see whether it looks right. And it does indeed. Then I got the blue rectangle, it's gonna be 50, 50, so 100 in, uh, 50 from that edge, so ooh, 150, 50, that's 200, 250 out of 400, that's gonna be 150 in width. So 50 down, 100 in. And remember again, our coordinate system, as we saw in one of the previous videos, is according to the parent that it's inside. So rectangle, 50 in, 50 down, with 150, height 50, color, what was again? Almost, of course it was uh, exposition 100, and uh, there we are. That looks pretty much as the user interface there. So now I'm exactly at what my designer had drawn up for me to, to create. Question number one here. Can items overlap? Well, we already saw that, right? But let's just try and do it nevertheless. So find the example again here, take the green rectangle and move that a bit up. So it's at 150 here. Now they overlap, the green overlaps the light blue. We can even see the green. So if I had a, if I had a color here, specify the color like uh, uh, zero, zero, uh, zero, zero, F, F, uh, what do I know? A, A. That's uh, not that color that I expected. A, A then. There we are. Now I got an R, G, R, G, B. So it was, I wanted it to be green. I'm not that good with colors, it seems. Let's see. Now I have a greenish with a bit of transparency. So you can actually see the, the overlap here. And if I want my blue rectangle to be on top of the green rectangle, I could do one of two things. I could move this whole section down here. Let's just do that. Just like, mm -hmm. there we are. Take this one, put it below. And now, it is the blue that overlaps, or let's undo, get it up here again, and expand this one. I could simply tell the blue rectangle that its set coordinates should be above the set coordinate of the, of the rectangle below. Okay. The other question, can child items be displayed outside of their parents? So let's try and change this, the position of the blue rectangle in there. Let me just undo the, all the, 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 the playing with colors here, of course, there we are, green. So, whoops, too much undo there, 150. Let's take the, the blue rectangle here and let's change its X position to be minus 50. Remember the parent, the, the, the coordinate is according to the parent. So zero comma zero is the topmost leftmost corner of our green rectangle, but now I, I tell my blue rectangle that it should start position minus 50. Let's run that again. And as you can see, it actually position, paints, whatever you want to say, itself outside of its parent. So that's perfectly allowed in QML. If I really do not want that to happen, what I can say is to, I can say my so my parent here, could you please clip all your children? So children should not be allowed to paint outside of the parent or display themselves outside of the parent. If I do that, you can see that it's now clipping. But clipping is not on by default. And the reason why it's not on by default is that clipping costs extra. And usually you do not need that extra feature. So we will see in some of the upcoming videos that you need to be super careful. And sometimes you actually need to turn on clipping yourself to get the effect that you were hoping for. 
Okay, let's look at that code. Let me just undo the, the position outside. Let's look at that code. We got 36 lines of code here. That is rather repetitive. It is rather, uh, that's an enormous amount of uh, hard-coded numbers in there. And of course, that is, that's not going to be very maintainable. In one of the upcoming videos, we will see how we can create components. We'll see how we can introduce local variables if we want to do that. But at least we can do a bit about this code here to make it just a little bit better. And remember again, our property bindings and our ID property allows us to refer to other elements. So I could say something like uh, ID colon top. That would be the top element. I'll bet you that you're going to try that yourself. Never, ever call your element top. As we'll see in the section on anchor layout, top is a special meaning in QML. So by now, get your brain into the mode that we do not have an element called top. We always put that on big letters on your wall. Your spouse will love you for writing on your wall saying, never ever call it top, but call it root. So let's go over here, call it root. root. That's the, the root element. I can go down here and say, well, the width here is uh, root dot width minus well, we had the 100 there for the width and height. And here we have root dot height, height. Um, hmm, can I do that? Um, minus 50. Divided by two. Not divided by 20, divided by two. There we go. Hmm, that didn't work out well, did it? You get the idea. Is it have half of the height for this stuff here? And I need 50. Yeah, there we go. Almost. Did I also? Oh, I, of course, I had the green overlap. So, well, let's go to the green and fix that one up. So the exposition of the green rectangle is well, the same thing as it was before. The Y position is the, the ID colon blue. Oops. The Y position is blue dot X plus blue dot height. And there we are again. I'll let you play on with this example here and improve it further on. The last part here is likely not what you're going to do in real life. It's only in this very first introduction video that I will do my layout with absolute coordinates. Later on, we'll see how we have layout managers of different kinds. And those layout managers, obviously, is preferable over this stuff. Then I would say, well, I want this one on top of that one rather than this one down here should be at that position. But in any case, you can see that by applying a bit of uh, throwing out some of those magic numbers, I, my code already starts looking much better. That's it for this video. Subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with new videos coming along. Thank you very much.